Hello, thank you for being here. Really excited to showcase for you today, multiplayer IGV. So what we've done is take the very popular genome browser IGV and add a layer of real-time collaboration on top of it. So as you all know, bioinformatics is a very collaborative field. Every day, we use tools like Google Docs, Notion, Slack. And what these tools all have in common is that they let you work on the same view with multiple people in real time. And so as a result, if you're writing a paper, you don't need to have underscore final, final two, final three, final, final anymore. You, you don't have to share different files between each collaborator and track it that way. You can just write it and collaboratively interact with it. And so we're used to having these kinds of tools at our fingertips, but we've not yet seen that in bioinformatics. So to kind of motivate why this would be important, picture the scene. You're reviewing a variant in IGV, and it looks like a real variant. There's a, a C at the reference. There's a SNP that has a T. There's about 50-50 split. So this looks like a heterozygous variant. But I'm not really sure. So let me ask my colleague, Maria. She's an expert on this. So here's what I have to do. Set up calendar invite, set up a time to chat. Later on, we connect. I open up my conference call software and start sharing my screen. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. Um, and so what, what Maria tells me is that first let's right click over here and sort the view by the base. And so now you can see all the T's are clustered together. The other thing we'll wanna do is check for strand bias. So let's click on the gear, color all the reads by strand. And so what you can see is that the SNP is present in both the positive and negative strands. So this is good, there's no strand bias. If you look more closely, you'll see there's good quality scores. There's good mapping scores for the alignment. This looks like a real heterozygous variant. Great. So now I stop sharing, I get out of my Zoom call and I've solved the problem. Now the question is, what if my internet was choppy? Would screen sharing have worked very well? Would remote control have worked very well? What if Maria was in a different time zone and we didn't overlap? How do we collaborate on this sort of thing asynchronously, especially if there's multiple people all over the world, without just sharing static screenshots of IGV back and forth via email? So we, we don't run into these issues when we're using something like Google Docs, but we do run into these issues when trying to share and collaborate on bioinformatics visualizations. Now, if you're interested, as a side note, in learning about how you review variants in IGV to detect real variants from artifacts, uh, this example I actually got from sandbox.bio, there's a tutorial there from the Griffith Lab, and it's really nice for knowing whether something is real or an artifact. So check that out if you're interested. But you know the, the idea of reviewing variants with multiple people and having that state kind of shared and stored for later, it was kind of the idea, the motivation for creating multiplayer IGV in the first place. So the idea is we have IGVJS. So this is a, a tool that is a, a JavaScript version of the IGV genome browser desktop. And we basically took that and added a bit of interactivity and a collaboration on top. And you could check it out at igv.sandbox.bio. I wanna give you a demo of this so that you could see what it looks like to use this with many people. What I'll do is show you three browser windows. Um, and here, here's the scenario I'm demoing. So I'm, I'm still collaborating with Maria. She's found 
something odd in the data. And we want to bring in another expert, Oliver, who's really good at this stuff as well. And so he can help us figure out what's going on. And so I'll have, this is my screen, this will be Maria's screen, this will be Oliver's screen. So let's take a look. First, I can go to the website, pick my reference genome. In this case, it's going to be HG19. And then I will go ahead and create a session. So this creates an IGVJS session that is just for you. And it gives you a unique URL that you can use to share with others. So then what we can do is I can go share that with Maria and I'll share it with Oliver as well. And so now we're all looking at the same view. I wanna go ahead and load the data that's been giving us some trouble. So this is a BAM file. I'm gonna also specify its index, its BAI index, and I will call the track something like sequence alignments. Now we're gonna go to a particular region in the genome where we've been seeing some issues. And so I'm not too familiar with what those issues are, so I can hand it off to Maria. And, and as you can see, as she's moving around the screen, the cursor location is being synced. So she's trying to figure out what's the region that is giving us trouble. And I think she's found it, but she needs to zoom in. So let's all zoom in. And this is, you know, she zooms in and it's all synced automatically. So the problem she's identified is that there's low coverage here. It's very low coverage. There's barely any reads that map here. Why is that? And this is important to us because in this case, we're actually calling copy number variants, which relies heavily on the coverage. So we're not sure why this is happening. This is why Oliver's here. So on Oliver's side, he's like, wait a minute, I've seen this before. This might be a GC bias problem. So let me load in a track in IGV that has GC content in the genome. And then he's going to move it up so we could all see it. And you could see, as he's highlighting for us in his cursor, that the GC content in this area of the genome is very low. And so what that means is that the sequencers are having, the sequencer we're using is having trouble reading through that area. So that doesn't mean that there's very low coverage in this area. It just means that it's an artifact of sequencing and not real biology. Um, as a side note, Oliver's name of my son, he's 11 months old. He's always trying to chew on my keyboard, but he's really good at deciphering uh, genomic variants. So this is the demo. Uh, you can check it out at igv.sandbox.bio. So, so how does this actually work? Well, behind the scenes, we have kind of two set of places where we store data. One is a channel, one is a database. A channel, you can think of it as the same as a channel in a chat application. You have a place where everybody connects to. And so this represents the IGV session. So everybody can create different sessions and they're all separate and you can share the link in order to connect to it. The way we are all connected to the channel is through WebSockets connection. So this helps us do this real-time collaboration where we can very quickly send updates to each other, but we still want to maintain the state in a database so that if everybody disconnects, and someone comes back later on, the state is still saved and we can continue from where we were. So for example, if I move my cursor to a certain X, Y position, it will send that information to the channel saying, can you please broadcast this? And the channel will broadcast all the information to everyone so that they can update their local state of where my cursor is. And now we all share the same state. Similarly, if Oliver needs to go to chromosome two, same thing happens. It will be broadcast to all of us, and now we are all synced. So the idea is you can use WebSockets to do, you know, bidirectional communication with the server. With HTTP, typically you'll send a request, you get a response, and that's the end of the connection. Whereas the WebSockets connection stays on until you actually close it. So what are some of the applications 
that we can use this sort of framework for. So one that we talked about is data visualization on the web. So I showed the example with IGVJS, but you could imagine applying this to other genome browsers like JBrowse, the UCC genome browser, where a particular application of enabling this is clinical genomics, like reviewing variants that you get from sequencing someone and you want to know, is this real or not? And so when you use this sort of application with video conferencing and screen sharing, you can not only support the synchronous mode of collaboration, but also the asynchronous. If you're on different time zones, you can collaborate on it and work together. The other kind of application that I've not yet explored is data analysis web tools. Like platforms that let you analyze your bioinformatics data typically don't have very much collaboration tools, and it would be nice to see how this can be applicable there. Right, so what's next for multiplayer IGV? So right now we support syncing uh, the cursor between different users. You know, if you change the locus, it will be synced. If you add a track, delete a track, move a track, that will be synced. We even allow you to save regions so that, again, if you're working asynchronously, you can annotate specific regions in the genome that need review and have someone else go through them and look at them. Uh, but what we don't support yet is syncing events like sorting by a certain characteristic or coloring by a certain characteristic. The reason is that we would we need to modify IGVJS itself so that when you do click on these things, it sends an event that we can intercept and then broadcast. So th that's something I'd like to do is work with the IGVJS team to support that. And the other thing is, can we integrate the same logic with other genomics FIS tools? I've tried writing that in such a way that it can be extracted into a library that's not very dependent on IGVJS itself. And so it'd be really exciting to see if we can, you know, supercharge other tools to do the same thing. All right, this is all I had. Thank you so much. Please check it out at igv.sandbox.bio. It's also open source on GitHub at this URL. Thank you very much.